So let's talk about a few more reports from 10th edition's preview demo games, with five more core rule clarifications that seem to have come to light. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Warhammer 40k 10th edition once more, and in this video I thought we'd do a quick follow-up video to the last one talking about the Warhammer Fest demo games, just to round up a few more points that I'd seen in other reports, or other people had got in touch with me to share. As with the last video, which was a bit more long and comprehensive, these are basically rules leaks that are coming out of Warhammer Fest. Games Workshop had a bunch of tables set up there, very long queues to get a short little game of 10th edition in, two Screamer Killers and some Termagants facing down two Ballistas Dreadnoughts and some Infernus Marines. The games were very, very basic and not really showing off anything that they didn't have to. Lots of really quite important things to a normal game of 40k were skipped for brevity and to keep the focus on just rolling some dice. But between quite a lot of games of this played and lots of people reporting, plus also asking for clarification regarding some rules mechanics, quite a lot of new stuff for 10th edition does appear to have come out. Obviously this is all word of mouth from a Games Workshop staff member who might not have played loads of games of 10th edition yet, communicated through people who might potentially have misunderstood the rules, so there's definitely a little bit of margin for error here. Some things might be slightly misinterpreted, particularly fine details that might not be all that obvious. I treat this just as fun preview teasers, just a little bit more to help us wrap our heads around what's mainly changing in the core rules. In the last video, some of the major things that we talked about were command points changing, going to 0 CP at the start of the game, and then 1 per command phase. The blast keyword is now nice and simple, plus 1 shot per 5 models in the squad, and a somewhat strange rule about not ending your move on top of objectives. This time we've got 5 more minor things that I hadn't included in the first video, a little bit more clarification as to how Overwatch works, and the same with some more fine details on the charge and fight phase, stuff that I didn't mention last time round. One of the bigger ones is a rule called Desperate Escape, which we finally know about how Battleshock works, we knew that was coming, but it's good to know the details. There's the threat range of vehicle explosions from Deadly Demise confirmed. Plus, and perhaps most surprising out of this, is the possibility of shooting monsters and vehicles into melee. They might not be as protected as they once were when fighting infantry. First off, for Overwatch, last time we talked about how it can be fired at multiple times now, either at the end of the enemy movements phase or during an opponent's charge phase. One of your units gets to light up the enemy, though only hitting on sixes. Previously it was maybe a little bit nebulous as to whether or not it was a stratagem, but it does seem that there's fairly reasonable confirmation that that's now still the case. And perhaps the other major question was how long a range you could fire at in the movement phase. The answer to that apparently is 24 inches. I've seen multiple sources saying that range is not just maximum range. Kind of makes sense, as I guess that's more sort of close firefight type range, as opposed to firing artillery across the map. Would be kind of hard to argue that that's overwatch. And while it sounds powerful, I would bear in mind that CP sounds like it's going to be drastically reduced now. If you're firing Overwatch, you're going to be giving up some pretty major other options. Still though, certainly could be really big. Taking a big chunk out of an enemy unit that's just about to strike you in shooting could be massive. A suitably big and scary unit could still get great value out of that, even hitting on sixes. Next up, Deadly Demise is the explosion rule that we've seen on a whole bunch of vehicles. Explosions in current 40k are generally at 6 inches, though a few smaller ones are 3 inches, and some of the big nightly ones are even bigger, rolling 2d6. Apparently this is now going to be standardised, so the range for explosions for all vehicles and monsters where relevant will now be 6 inches. We've seen things like the new Ballistas Dreadnought getting Deadly Demise d3, so that will be, if you roll the 6 to explode, everything takes d3 mortal wounds within that range. And the Screamer Killer Carnifex looked like it had a single mortal wound on that. So again, that will be over quite a wide area, but the squad's within just taking one mortal. Kind of straightforward that everything's the same, to be honest. Another bit of 10th edition getting streamlined. Next, and perhaps one of the most surprising things about these details, was that I saw some reports of people being able to shoot the Screamer Killer Carnifex in melee, when it was in combat with Infernus Marines. I guess this might not have happened all that often during the preview games, seeing as it can go through them really quite quickly. The comments that I saw referencing this seemed to think that you'd be able to shoot at monsters with a minus one to hit penalty if they were in combat with infantry. I'd say out of any of the previews here, this is the one that I'm a little bit more questionable of. This will be really quite a big change, though I suppose I could see it making some sort of intuitive sense on a logical basis. It is sometimes a bit odd if, say, you had a bunch of Gretchen in combat with a Land Raider, and you're not allowed to shoot the Land Raider for fear of hitting your models. If this really is the case, I'd guess it's going to be locks to big stuff fighting little stuff, 
Probably if you're fighting big stuff versus big stuff, they might still be protected in combat, perhaps. But if not, then it could mean that melee is no safe haven for vehicles and monsters, even though they do have their increased toughness now. Be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. Could be a major shake-up to 40k, could potentially just be a demonstrator wanting to have some fun. Though I have seen it mentioned multiple times in different people's reports of Warhammer Fest, and that makes it seem a little bit more likely to me. Next up, and one pretty interesting one that I was quite keen to learn the subtleties of, is how Battleshock affects falling back. Currently in the 10th edition previews, we know that Battleshock gives you a trio of different debuffs if it's triggered. You can trigger it by taking casualties, or by certain debuff things like the Screamer Killer Khan effects, and it basically means that until your unit regroups, you can't use stratagems, you can't get any objective control, so you won't be able to take points. And then from the core rule itself, it said that you must check Desperate Escape if you're falling back. This seemed very, very likely to be similar to Desperate Breakout, as it was in the 9th edition rules. That's the one where you roll a dice per model in the units, and on a 1 it dies. But apparently in 10th edition, it's even more brutal. If you fall back from an enemy unit when you're battle shocked, apparently you have to roll 1d6 per unit in the squad, and if you roll a 1 or 2, then that model is destroyed. This kind of feels a bit akin to rules in 40k's past. If you fall back when your unit is broken, you've got the chance of getting swept and cut down. Unless you get lucky, then there's a good chance that you're losing a decent amount of your unit if you choose to do so. Apparently on top of this, Desperate Escape is also still going to be a rule that you can use for falling back over and through enemy miniatures, as it basically is at the moment. In current 40k, it's a stratagem called Desperate Breakout, and it can be used to get over enemy models if you're wrapped round and flanked by the enemy. At the moment though, it's a stratagem that costs CP. To be honest with how punishing it is, and how precious stratagems are, I kind of wonder whether it really still needs to be a stratagem if you're going to have the chance to lose miniatures this hard. Maybe it could just literally be part of the fallback rules. If you have to move over or through enemy miniatures to fall back, you can do so, but you have to check this penalty. Overall though, this one feels quite fun. Perhaps a bit of a return to enemy units sweeping each other, and it means that you just can't afford to disengage if your unit's battle shocked, and it's fighting on the front line, and it's valuable enough that you don't want it to be lost. Seems like it could be particularly brutal for any vehicles that take battle shock here. You really wouldn't want to be falling back with a broken tank, and have the chance of it being overrun and not escaping. Finally, we've got a little bit more details as to the whole charge and fight phase sequence. I did go over a whole bunch of this in the previous video, but more details have been added, so I thought I'd put it all together once more. A lot of these rules are kind of fiddly, and it's kind of hard to grasp them by word of mouth without seeing them written down, so there maybe is a bit of chance for error here, but it sounds like it's broadly going to work like this. Charging works kind of similar to how it does at the moment, move 2d6 inches via the dice roll, but now the way that you contact the enemy is a bit more restrictive, apparently you have to move in a straight line towards the enemy unit that you're charging, you can't just pivot around and try and surround and wrap and trap enemy units if you've rolled quite high and gained a little bit of extra charge movements. Currently in 40k it's kind of common to have units basically do a bit of a dance around enemy units to try and gain extra movement, and I guess that would address this. On top of this, you apparently have to base the enemy unit if you're able, though I've heard conflicting reports as to whether or not that's actually going to stop you from getting in engagement range or things. A couple of places that I've seen seem to think that if you could get into an engagement range, then you, you could still make a successful charge. That would only actually happen though if your charge had only just fallen short by less than an inch, or there was something physically blocking you from getting into base-to-base -base contact, maybe overhanging models, overshadowing their bases, or bits of awkward terrain. Going to be hard to fully understand that until we see the full rules, but I guess that would make somewhat logical sense and stop enemies dancing around the enemy targets. When you actually get to fight with a unit, apparently fighting is done by piling in, it's still the same as it is at the moment, so you would get to do a bit of wiggling towards the nearest models, and try and get more of your unit into the fight. Again, I'd probably guess that if you can get into base contact with a model, there might be a requirement to do so, as opposed to the fairly freeform version that we have now. Then when you actually get to fight enemies, at least in the Warhammer Fest demos, the reports were that the units that can fight are the models that are actually in base contact, and also any of your friendly models that are in base contact with one of your units that's in base contact with the enemy. Basically, I guess that would add up to fighting in two ranks, kind of similar to how it is at the moment, just going on a bit more of a base-to-base -base type of thing, as opposed to within half an inch of half an inch. Then apparently the order of fighting is broken down into units that fight first and units that fight normally. Apparently charging gives you fights first still. The fights first units get to alternate starting with the charging player, 
So that as per now, he still gets to fight first with a charging unit first. And enemy fights first rules would only come into effect if you're charging with multiple places across the map. Then the fights normally units get to go. That would start alternating, starting with the opposing player as it is at the moment. And the fight's last rule is basically gone altogether. And all the weirdness that that came from with breaking charges and just being a very powerful melee debuff that disrupts the normal order of combat. Then finally, as we mentioned last time, consolidating is a bit more limited. Now it's generally only done if your unit finds itself disengaged from combat, so normally after you've killed your foe if you can. You can then only consolidate with your unit if it would either bring you into engagement range with an enemy and they'd still be able to strike you back, or if it'll get you onto an objective marker, an extra little push to take a point. Overall it kind of feels like a bit of a refined and polished version of the 8th and 9th edition charge and fight phases. It'll be interesting to see how well this works, I can't help but think that with the practicalities of tabletop terrain and fighting on it that it might be a little bit tricky without that extra wiggle room. Plus you might not be able to quite bunch up your models as much as you might think if you have bits overhanging their bases and things, could be a little bit tight on the table. Most of the changes do seem to make a bit of sense though, maybe not gaining a whole bunch of random movement in the charge and fight phase isn't the worst idea. A bit of a debuff to melee armies I suppose. But the shenanigans that you could pull off with it just seemed a little bit arbitrary and maybe not very in keeping with head cannon unless you're playing some tricksy Eldar or something. The order of fighting changes are quite like, they certainly needed to sort out that section as it was super obscure to newer players. In any case, there's just a few more details that have been coming out of the reports of the Warhammer Fest gaming previews. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do these changes seem good? What do you make of potential news of shooting into combat with big monsters and things? and desperate escape and the straight line charges. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well and you can find that linked in the video description below. If you'd like to help keep the videos coming then any support is enormously appreciated, channel patrons do get a few advantages seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaway with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.